So I, I think we can start. Huh? Today we have a very special presenter. Maria Tikhanovska is sharing her experience with us. Huh? And I am giving floor to Maria. Maria, please introduce yourself. Huh? All right, thank you. Well, I can't say that I'm so special as you said, but <laughs> thank you very much for having me here and for inviting me. My name is Maria and uh, I am a Salta and Delta qualified language teacher. Uh, and uh, uh, the thing that I'd like to do today, why I'm here today, is to share my own experience uh, while teaching math and science. It was a clear course, uh, spent a spontaneous one, uh, which I started teaching when the pandemic started and we decided to do something different for our kids. Uh, well, it was quite challenging because uh, I had never had such experience before and I had nowhere to go and I had no books. Uh, of course, I knew a lot of things about CLIL, math, science, but I'm a language teacher, to be honest. So math is not, uh, is, is, is not my piece of cake at all. Well, but uh, I was kindly offered uh, sharing materials from Singapore because in Singapore they have implemented uh, CLIL into their school curricular. So they, they've got it at their regular school and they've got the program and books and wonderful materials which they kindly shared with me and I would like to share with you today something. I'm not going to keep you for long today. I understand that it's Saturday and the school year is starting next week, so you must be very busy. Uh, they've got uh, Max Math Primary, which is the course designed for young learners starting with grade one till grade five. And today, as a sample, I've got grade three for you here to have a look at. We are not going to look at science, which I love too, but uh, we are going to look only at math. So uh, this, this is the list of topics for the curricula for, the, for a year. So they chapters and if you post up to deal with different line graphs bar charts pie charts and the kids are very good at it although it is a kind of IELTS question uh, multiplication division lens mass volume time which is not in our curricular thing and position and movement as well uh, my suggestion is to look at shape and space today because it is something that I really prepared, if you don't mind. We don't. Is it fine? Absolutely, Maria, absolutely. Well, and first of all, I would like uh, to start by saying, like by dividing the students, the kids into pairs of mini groups and asking them uh, to uh, come uh, with the ideas, what they know about shapes and what they think they would like to know about shapes. So imagine that you are my students now. So please, uh, can you make a list of things that you know, would like to know? about shapes so screen now no no we don't no sorry what about now no no we no. don't what it's in progress ah right yeah we see just a white it's whiteboard yeah okay Wonderful. If you see the whiteboard, it's already good. So uh, I would like you to look at the table. Okay. 
So what I think I know about shapes. Okay, and what I'd like to know about shapes. All right, do you need an example? Yeah. All right, so for example, uh, can you give me uh, the name for a shape like this? What is it? Circle. Okay. Circle. Good. So, what would you like to know about circle? Imagine that you are eight, nine, ten. It's hard, but it's useful uh -huh. to imagine that you are around the that age. The size, maybe. Uh -huh. The name of the shape. The size. Is it of the two, two D or three D shape? Ah, okay. You know a lot. So, is it a two a two D shape or how how does it have a three? Sorry, three D shape. Okay. So, uh, you ask kids and put them into groups, and they come up with some ideas. Believe me, they will have a lot of ideas and then you can discuss as the whole group like they, they can give you more things as a teacher you will understand clearly what they know and what background knowledge they already have okay mm -hmm. so let's get back to the course after this task mm -hmm. and you see my screen now shape and space yeah all right so, uh, all these kids, they have names. We've got Padme, we've got Tom, and they are the characters of the book. So, first of all, I would like you to look at different shapes, and I will share the cards with you because they are printable, they are free, and they are in PDF format. You can make the presentation like this. Uh, uh, let's look at this shape. Mm -hmm. A lesson. Triangle. Can you say that? Triangle. Triangle. Uh huh. Circle. And you can go through them in any way as presenting vocabulary. Uh, and we also have pentagon, hexagon here, octagon, and semicircle. Mm -hmm. uh, you know. The shapes can be irregular and irregular. What do you think the differences might be? Irregular. irregular shapes. What do you think about the square? Okay, maybe a, a square is kind of regular shape and uh, pentagon is irregular. Yes, because because of the angles. Mm -hmm. Okay, something else that I used while working with kids uh, was, of course, the video. Uh, the video that I particularly like. Um, I, I think you might know it. So, have you seen this one? It's me again, Jessie. I want you to meet somebody who loves... So, but you can't just give the video without a task. So I would ask my students uh, to uh, watch and listen and uh, uh, tell me how many shapes of different kinds uh, they have seen. For example, three circles, five squares, I will share the link to this video with to you explore. as well because they I'm go Shana through special shape finding binoculars. <gasps> circles. So, how many circles? I would ask them. Five. Five. 
and like it, 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 this task is kind of presentation and this uh, Schwanes videos are just great and they've got a lot of math topics and they they can, they can be uh, uh, easily implemented into any course well uh let's get back to this so uh then uh, we would look at the table like this for example uh you can do it in different ways for instance you can give them the table as it is if you are working with uh, not a very strong group of students and ask well let's look at this table we've got some shapes here number of sides and number of vertices but you you have to understand whether they have already faced with the word vertex vertices or no so for example my students have already uh seen this word and they have learned that i, I suppose so uh a square has four sides and four vertices and I will ask my students to make sentences about rectangle. Jana, will you try? Okay, rectangle. Yes, it's uh, four sides and uh, four vertices, right? Good job. So, and I would uh, split them into groups or pairs and ask them to make just sentences to practice the sentences uh, to practice mm -hmm. the language them mm -hmm. like uh, with the structure it is or has okay mm -hmm. so then we would look at triangles and i also have the pdf cards with you to share of this let's look at the triangles uh-huh i would ask them can you show me a triangle a triangle and we would do tpr mm -hmm. together and then this triangle has no right angles. Let's have a look. One, two, three. Three angles, but no right angle mm -hmm. this angle is right this triangle doesn't have it so it has three vertices okay and three sides this triangle has one right angle Marina, how many sides does it have? I can't hear you. Can you turn off your sound, please? Don't know. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it has three sides. This, this, yes, this uh, triangle has three sides. One right angle and two uh, irregular. Mm, okay. Just, two you know, irregular right angles. angles. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good. And this triangle has no right angle. So, and you, you can present this in different ways as well. So, uh, before we continue, I would like you to look at the picture of a robot. Look at the picture and give me the colors of the parts of the body of the rabbit what color is his head tatiana uh, his head is blue thank you very much how many eyes has he got marina two it has two eyes very good and you can go through it by asking different questions practicing language and dealing with different shapes and then mm -hmm. the question no? So, uh, the task is actually here. Read the text below by describing the picture using shape words. One letter fits in each shape. 
Dr. Himachi, a famous scientist, built a robot out of shapes. He used four small circles for its legs. Yes, let's put the word circles. Okay, so are you writing letters in the spaces? Yes. Yes. Okay. Are you working individually or together? Together. All right. So, and then I would again give it to the group work, to the pair work, and the kids would come up with the missing letters and will again recycle and revise vocabulary of shapes. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Fine. So, uh, then. Uh, you can ask them uh, to uh, maybe to draw the shapes and uh, uh, label them. Then you can uh, recycle again by asking, well, let's look at 2D shapes uh, I've got here. So, which shape is red? Circle. Which shape is red? It's a circle. It doesn't have any angles. What shape is that? And you form different questions and the students answer them uh, while looking at the shapes. As a result, you are again revising the shapes and mathematical vocabulary. So, uh, another task that we did was this, match the first part of the word with the second one, like for example, triangle, pan, so what is the word? Pentacles. And uh, what I would do, I would give the mouse, for example, to Katerina. Katerina, do you have a mouse? Do you have a mouse? Good. So, Katerina, I'm going to give you the authority can you match the parts together? I will try. I'll do my best. I believe in you. <laughs> yes. But it's, uh, click. It's... Click on pen or any other beginning. Click. Okay. No, no, no. Click. Just click. Don't comment, but click. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Oh, sorry. You broke my. Oh. Uh huh. One second. I will reload that. Give me a second. I can click. Okay. Give me a second. I I will reload my screen. Okay. Can you see it now? Yeah. Yeah. I have to give you the mouse again. Yeah, you've got it. Yeah, you can click on the beginning and the ending of the word. I try to click pyramid. Uh huh. But P okay. pyramid. Yeah. It should be pentagon, maybe. Uh huh. Yeah. I cannot see the uh, bottom of the screen. Really, it's just because of your computer. Because on maybe. mine, it is like. Okay. Uh huh. Good. Okay. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. I try. Uh, Good job. <laughs> I got him. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Symmetry, uh, elephant, but it is not the shape. <laughs> it is, but it is irregular. <laughs> uh, we have two years. Yeah, we've mm -hmm. got S Y L and oh, C Y L and C U S U W M. You did that. You did Very good. Good job. Let's let's check. Wow, good result. <laughs> then I would close that window and ask my students to open your their exercise books if they've got them and write down as many shapes as they can remember from the screen. 
Okay, I would give them the time limit like two minutes, write down as quickly as you can and as many as you can, and they do that. Okay, let's move on. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So uh, now we are going to look at another table. Name, example of the shape, number of sides, and number of vertices. So look at number one. It is pentagon. It has five sides. How many vertices does it have? Five. Five as well. Five. Okay, let's put down five here. And they, they could make the same table. Uh, for them to feel like uh, free and independent, to develop um, it, like independence in learning, you can ask them to choose three. Any three they like. They shouldn't write about everything or complete the table about everything, but they can choose those shapes that they really like. Okay, so yeah. this is the table and let's play the game. What shape am I? And I would just nominate one student to read. Tanya, will you read A, please? I have three sides and three vertices. And then three. I would ask them to write the, the answer into the chart. Triangle? Mm -hmm. And then we, we, we could put here triangle and we play this game. After that, I would ask them to come up with two what shape am I question by themselves. And they, they ask questions and they work in groups and they guess each other's shapes. So, uh, what shapes can you draw? Different shapes, always three vertices, three sides are possible tasks to do. Uh, and there is something else that I really um, liked. So, uh, you could ask them to find 2D shapes in their house for their homework, for example. These are regular hexagons. Yeah, in beehives. This is an irregular pentagon. And they can find them. You show them this and they can find for the next class different shapes around their house or outside their house, for example. And uh, you can ask them to draw them if you want to. And I really think that this thing is important. You can devote the whole class uh, uh, to doing that. It's like 2D shape and the properties. So there is a rectangle. It has four vertices. It has four straight sides and four right angles. Don't, don't assign it for their homework, but do this with them. But that's a great idea. You can just uh, cut them into pieces. You can just... Uh, Ask uh, each student to prepare one in class and then discuss together using the whiteboard if you're working online in Zoom or if, you, if you're working face-to-face, -face, uh, you can just uh, make the PDF like that and like uh, cut them into pieces, okay? So, and from school to home, this is the part that I particularly like and find it quite important for students. Uh, what do you like about 2D shapes? What was hard about 2D shapes? Which develops their critical thinking. And it's something that doesn't deal directly with math, but deals with their development anyway. And uh, we use this uh, self-check uh, grids or tables all the time. I understand. I understand a bit. I need more time to understand this. It's a kind of self-assessment that uh, they uh, got used to using in class. So uh, you can, again, make it as a, uh, a printout or you can prepare it online, it's up to you. How well do you understand this topic now? Circle one face for each statement. And then they discuss this and they reflect on what they have learned. 
and this task goes for homework as well one of the homeworks it's not like one lesson today it's a group of lessons on one topic okay mm -hmm. uh, i have checked learning on this topic we have shared some understanding at home talk to your parents tell them about the shapes and then the parents sign put the date and the teacher comments on that and puts the date as well so this is one topic with several lessons i guess five lessons on this topic to uh to learn it like more profoundly or profoundly enough i would say and uh what i actually can share with you are uh, those pdf uh, files i also have these things for you here so uh, a regular and the regular 2d shapes making triangles you can do it in class with them ask them to bring in several pencils so we need actually four and uh, they try to make different shapes and they discuss whether the statement's true or false i can make a triangle by joining three pencils and they just use on their tables and they join them and they read the statements and by means of exploring they, they, they come up with then you can ask them to throw, draw five different triangles you can make with three and four pencils can you make three triangles with four pencils guys yeah. no. 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 only one. Oh, you can you can put them like this and one is in the middle Yes. One, two, and three. You can do that. Shall I draw it for you? No, we understand. Like fine, that. fine, good. Uh, and like I've got this task, and th this is another thing to have a look at making cubes from nets. And we cut out the nets and we make the cubes for 3D shapes when we, we are learning 3D shapes. I will share them with you. Another thing is these flashcards I also can share with you if you want them. Of course, we want. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> you can use them online or offline, they are printable. Um, well, I think I didn't bore you much today and I tried to be very short in everything. Uh, any questions? No, it was very interesting. Thank you. Maria, thank you so much. And thank you for listening. It is something that I really thought was worth sharing because like when I did that, nobody was there to share anything with me, but I, I had to learn everything step by step. That was wonderful. And the ideas that you showed us, the ways of presenting vocabulary, the ways of working with video, all these things, uh, they're very valuable. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me. If you have any questions, my contact is in our group and you can find me on Facebook as well. Let's become friends and we'll develop as teachers community. Because this is something that can really change the way we teach, the way we teach English, the way we teach math and approach teaching as a whole. But because this is something I really want to change and to do. Thank you very much for being so patient with me. Oh, thank you so here. much, Maria. Thank you. Thank you for your lecture. It was very valuable. Thank you for this work. Yeah. So and thank you everyone i will write now what we're going to do to get the certificates because very soon we'll have our last session we'll vote now which is the best time for it and uh, i will send you the certificates so thank you for this day and uh, see you very soon thank you thank you very much bye. have a nice weekend bye. goodbye bye everyone thank bye. You. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye, bye.